On Tuesday the 23rd of April 2019, my girlfriend Lauren burst into the bathroom at 3am, uh, hearing me in a panic, to my dismay and my not knowing, with a sort of whimpering, whining, scared sound. Um, she found me uh, foaming at the mouth, having convulsions, uh, screaming, shouting, again to my dismay, to my not knowing. Um, I got really aggressive, apparently, not only with her, but with the paramedics who came to my house. I had gone into septic shock, which is the final stage before death. Don't know how to start this off. Okay, so today's day is, um... April 23rd, 2020. Uh, it's a Thursday. And, um... Oh, I don't know how to do this. Um, today is, in fact, the fourth week we've been doing it, but for the past few weeks, uh, every Thursday at 8pm, we uh, clap for the NHS. One that I personally have taken part in. It's just wonderful and beautiful to see the world and my local community uh, unite in such uh, daunting, scary times. Uh, it, it's wonderful to see. Today um, also marks one year since uh, I contracted... Uh, can't even say the word. I can't. <laughs> Today marks one year since uh, I was taken into hospital. Uh, I had contracted sepsis. And, um. So, um, the follow up is this I wake up uh, in a hospital bed. Lauren. Andrew, my brother, and my mum, and my dad, all ran about in this periphery of my vision, and two doctors in the doorway to this side. No one really told me what had gone on uh, until I, you know, obviously came to, um, I was slowly coming down from all the meds and the anesthesia, etc, that they'd given me to calm me down and slow my heart rate. And then was uh, told by a doctor. I was seven, eight, literally mi minutes away from dying, pretty much. Those people saved my life. Um, kind of regret not really trying to talk to them or whatever, or getting to know the names, or looking at the name badges, what have you, because um, ever since, ever since I regret not thanking them, um, I wanted to go back, find them and thank them, but uh, that's practically an impossibility. The lead up to the whole sepsis thing was, um, the day previous I was, um, I had diarrhea and vomiting, really nauseous, couldn't stand up for at least a minute or so without feeling really like fatigue and really like dodgy. I maybe thought, you know, possible food poisoning. I certainly never felt that weird and that messed up and that, um, horrid uh, ever before, uh, if and when I've had food poisoning in the past. Took it as that. Got home, because me and Lauren had been out for a few hours. I asked her to go next door to pick up some paracetamol and some ibuprofen and some, uh, you know, diarrhea and vomit tablets. I took them. And uh, took a, I think it was two ibuprofen, and then had a nap. I woke up, um, however long later, felt really good, felt normalised again, um, and hunky dory. You know, I went downstairs, watched some YouTube, and watched some TV. Uh, I think we watched Big Bang Theory and Two and a Half Men. I uh, watched some YouTube, watched uh, Shane Dawson um, and Daz Black, and uh, I was completely fine. Made some tea, went up to bed, I kissed Laura on the forehead, 
and I went to sleep in the other room because, of course, I didn't want to pass it on to Lauren, so I kissed Lauren on the forehead and went to bed. The next minute I know, I hear a voice. It was a distinctive female's voice. Uh, it just said, OK, Bradley, we need you to calm down now. Um, nothing but blackness, and then I wake up the next minute. Apparently the situation was... I had uh, went to the toilet. Uh, embarrassingly enough, <laughs> I was... Um, was not clothed, let's say. So uh, I went to the toilet, apparently I collapsed, banged my pretty much everything because I was all bruised about a massive bump on my head. I had a really bad like bruise going up here and on here and like on my leg down here. Apparently I had collapsed and gone into uh, a fit state uh, and was to my unbeknownst was Essentially, uh, in a septic shock. The only people in the house at the time was Lauren and my stepdad at the time. I heard me in the bathroom but just went to bed. Uh, essentially just left me for dead. To his unacknowledgement, he didn't know what was going on. He just heard me or whatever and just whatever. Um, and then Lauren wakes up to the sound of my uh, my uh, my whimpering if you will I'm not going to play the clip because I don't want to play the clip and the clip's in my head right now I can hear the noise right now it's really affecting me and I don't like it uh, and Lauren woke up burst into the bathroom uh, my big tree trunk like legs were up against the bathroom door so I kept kicking the door kept swearing at Lauren Get getting really aggressive and really angry. Unbeknownst to me, I was practically in rage mode. Um, my body went into fight or flight mode. My body just uh, didn't know how to react and was scared, I guess. And of course, to humans' first instinct when the unbeknownst happens is essentially attack mode. So I just got really aggressive, kept kicking the door on Lauren really aggressively. Um, and then paramedics arrived, firefighters arrived to uh, essentially try and whatever, remove the door, remove the toilet to move me out because of course I'm quite a big lad and um, I'm not particularly a lightweight. I had to remove the door, remove the toilet um, and of course the paramedics were there to get me up and out and just uh, get me to the hospital. I get to the hospital, again I hear the voice in my head, we need, we need to calm down, I wake up, again my brother Andrew, my mom, Lauren, my dad are all in the room just staring at me and I'm just like Where am I? Why am I here? It's all fuzzy, but um, a doctor comes up to this side of me and um, Tells me that I contracted something called sepsis and I was like oh, what's what's sepsis to those who aren't aware is a blood disease and um I'm lucky I'm as young as I am because if I was any older, if I was an OAP, essentially I would be dead. It kills off uh, the elderly uh, quite rapidly. Their immune systems and their bodies are breaking down slowly. They can't quite fight it as well as uh, the younger people, if you will. I'm doing this video because we're in a really scary time right now. No one knows what to do next. We're practically trapped indoors and that's kind of how I felt in the hospital room. I wasn't allowed to get out of bed. I had cannulas and all shit plugged into my arms and around my body or whatever. I wasn't allowed to leave the bed. Um, not even for the toilet. They had, they had to give me that crappy little cardboard thing. Um, that looks like a weird skinny cowboy hat. At one point I uh, got out of bed and I was still tied up to the um, machine. So I just tugged and ripped out the cannula and uh, whatever else wiring was in me and uh, the doctor came in, put me back in bed. I just... For the past year it's been plaguing me and I can't stop thinking about it in these past two weeks, two, three weeks leading up to today. It has been a nightmare. I've been so restless. I haven't been able to sleep. I've been, my mood's been up and down, like I've just been really scared, really anxious, really worried. I've literally been feeling how I felt as soon as I got out of the hospital. Restless, 
angry, scared, upset, worried, trapped, just, um, all the above. I'm kind of doing this video as kind of like a full circle thing because I don't want to feel like that anymore. It is a trauma, if you can even put it as that, I don't know. Um, and it's been affecting me for the past year. I, um, I think about it every day. And when I think about it, I get scared. I get upset. Because I wanted to do this video with Lauren. But because of the recent circumstances, she's not here right now. This is, um... This is called... Ah, uh, fuck it. This is called an Infinity Bracelet. Uh, she got it me for Christmas. As you can see, it's got the Infinity kind of like... I don't know, it's not really focusing, but it's got the Infinity kind of thing there. I've been wearing it on my arm for the past few weeks because I miss her. And I can't be with her. So, um... She's not here with me, next to me, like I'd want her to be. She... <laughs> She's on my arm, even when she's not holding my arm. That's a little shout to the love of my life and the woman that saved my life. Warren literally saved my life in more ways than one, considering this video wouldn't be filmed uh, right now if it were her um I'd be dead Lauren and her family took me in they didn't even know me all that much um I've known Lauren since she was a little lass and uh I always thought her mum hated me <laughs> it's like that weird like thing of like oh the annoying little shit around the block oh the mum definitely hates me kind of thing so I always thought she wasn't particularly a big fan of mine. That couldn't be any less true. Lauren, um, I want you to do something right now. I'd really appreciate if you could pause this video right now because uh, I, I want you to take the phone or tablet or laptop into your mum's room or whoever's in your house and I want you to show this bit to them because although I haven't said it in person, uh, it doesn't mean that ain't true. The same day I got out of hospital, um, Lauren, her mum, and her stepdad um, came all the way up from Bradford, up to Blackpool, picked me up and took me to Bradford and put me up for two weeks. Um, I'm really grateful for that because Essentially, I would have just been alone again. And they didn't have to take me in. They insisted. So, um, I'm really going to name drop here, so I'm really sorry, but uh, Michael, Michelle, Amy, Lauren, um, literally, days after I could have died, um, <clears throat> you took me in. And I am forever appreciative of that. Um, and although I may not have said it in the past, I want you to know that. I'm forever grateful and appreciative of you guys. Uh, Michael taking me in to your house, considering you didn't really all know me all that well. Michelle, uh, allowing me to date your amazingly strong beautiful daughter and Amy thank you for giving me company and just making me laugh and making me smile um you're like the little sister that I never had uh so thank you all I love you all and I'm forever appreciative because you've done more than you've done more for me than uh, I could ever imagine and uh I hope <laughs> I hope that only one day I can reciprocate what you guys have done for me to you, so much love and thank you. So on to the next bit, my mum is a, a care worker, my grandma Jenny, um, 
She is, um, she, she's pretty ill right now. She could, uh, slip away within these next three weeks and, uh, I'd, I'd never really get to say goodbye. My grandma's wanted nothing but the best for me. My mom has pushed me <laughs> to be just way more than I know I can be. I'm not particularly a positive person. I don't believe in myself all that much, but uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say my family don't half believe in me and push me for greater and bigger things. My brother is nothing but loving and supportive. Um, my mom does nothing but push me and strive for me to be the best version of me I can be. My grandma and granddad have wanted nothing more than for me to just be successful and push myself to keep dreaming, keep striving and just keep pushing for who and what I want to be. And it's scary because my mom is a care worker um, in a care home. Again, like I said, isn't in the best of health, never has been. Um, I'm surprised she's managed to birth and raise two little shits like me and Andrew as a single parent. Her in that care home, she's um, incredibly uh, susceptible to this. It's scaring me uh, because she could get it and much like my grandma I won't be able to say goodbye. And then of course my grandma, incredibly strong and brave, who isn't in the best of health, could pass and again I won't be able to say goodbye. This last bit is not going to be as depressing, I hope. I just want to give a few shout outs and thank yous. If that's one thing that people need and people deserve right now, the people around me deserve that. Lauren, um, it's not else I can really say except for what I haven't already said, but thank you for saving my life because you've changed my life for the better and I am incredibly in love with you and incredibly happy with you. One day I cannot wait to make a wonderful life with you, with amazing kid or kids, make you my wife and love you for the rest of my life, so thank you. Mom, Andrew, uh, thank you for believing in me and doing the best you can do to make me and help me believe and love myself just that little bit more. Grandma Jenny, Grandad John, again, uh, my heroes, again, want nothing but the best for me, so thank you, I love you. Amy, you incredibly wonderful, beautiful minded, amazing little woman, um, this past year or so I've met you and seen you grow up and blossom into this amazing young woman. Um, <laughs> thank you for making me happy and smile on the days that it's not so easy to do that. A little bit of a detour but my Blackpool buddies. Amy, Fraser, Harry, Elise, thank you for wishing me well, thank you for making my life in Blackpool that much better even when I didn't want to be there, you guys made me want to stay. Special shout out to Elise and her mom. Her mom, who who works at the hospital where I was in, came to visit me, <laughs> um, gave me a hug, wished me well, took the time out of her day to come and visit me and see if I was okay. So, um, Elise, if you're watching, um, tell your mum I'm incredibly filled with love and happiness and joy and so much appreciativeness because although she didn't need to, your mum, uh, 
came and visited me and that was so sweet and I'm so happy about that, so thank you. Travis, my brother, um, there's nothing I haven't done or said in the past that um, I haven't already said, um, but thank you for essentially alerting, if you will, uh, everyone that cared and uh, letting everyone know that I was okay and healthy and safe. Um, because when you're in dire straits and scary times like that, you need someone to have your back and just let everyone know and just chill everyone out, uh, including myself. So, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And I love you, my brother. And of course, last but certainly not least, every single male, female, junior, NHS worker, care worker, caregiver, Anyone in the UK or worldwide that does the thing they do and love most, which is save lives, such as mine, was saved one year ago today. Thank you. You will never know how truly grateful I am. How truly grateful we all are. That we have amazing men and women and juniors on those wards, in those hospitals, saving lives on a day-to-day -day basis. You do nothing but strive to save and help people. And sometimes that's not shown or shown or proven enough, but it should be. And damn it, I'm damn proud to be British and I'm damn proud to be alive right now, but I'm damn appreciative of the men and women that fought that day to save my life. Thank you NHS. I'll be doing the um, Run 5, Tag 5, Donate 5 challenge for the uh, NHS charities. Like I said, I'm forever appreciative because I wouldn't be here recording this and living and breathing each day like it is my last. Yeah, like I said, I'll be doing the Run 5, Tag 5, Donate 5 challenge uh, where you run 5 miles, tag 5 people to do it next, and then donate £5 to the NHS charities. Yeah, that's that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really sorry if I rambled on way too long. Um... But yeah, I just wanted to do this video as kind of like a full circle thing, get everything off my chest out in the air and hopefully for the future I can be a little bit less restless, a little bit happier and get that monkey that's scratching me off my back. Thank you so much for watching NHS, thank you so much for saving our lives. But of course, in these dire times, stay happy, stay safe, stay redass.